Hello everyone, just a silly little video today. Uh, we have in my modeling group online, um, it's like a biannual group build and it's a very silly one. It's building bad. And what you do is you take a kit and it started out with you would just try to build it as poorly as you possibly could. So for example, my first entry was this. That's a 148th Roden SE5A. I had bought it for parts. It didn't have the parts I wanted, so it just was languishing in my um, shelf full of goodies. And finally I said, you know what, let's um, let's have some fun with it. So I built it pretty terribly <laughs> and it won that round of the competition. And then the next time it came around, I had a car that I started building when I was, I think I was 12, and I had paint problems with it. So it just sat there waiting for me to be skilled enough to fix it. But then this Second round came along, so I took this and really made it ugly. It was a um, Charger Daytona by Ravel, uh, Pro Modeler actually, and when I painted it initially, the paint bubbled immediately. So I was very frustrated and just threw everything right back in the box. Um, after those first two rounds, we added in a, um, a different side of things. We could take a poor quality kit and try to make it look good. So I tried that side of things. You could build it either way. You could build it something absolutely terrible, or you could try to make a bad one look good. So I did that and came in second with my Triumph TR3 here from uh, Minicraft was the kit that I had. I think it came from something before that too. But anyway, this time around, I built this kit. It's a Roden Focke D7. And I actually had bought this with a project in mind, um, and then I ended up borrowing some parts off it for another build here and there, and it was just sitting and waiting. And then a whole bunch of Edward Fokker D7s and 148 fell into my lap, a whole bunch of them. So this kit I was gonna sell, but I felt bad selling it because I had taken parts out of it. So finally, I just said, you know what? This will be fine for this build. And I went crazy with it. And as you can see, it's pretty horrendous, the engine. Well, <laughs> the engine is its own being. I built the, the halves inverted from each other, so one side, the, the top is on the bottom, and so on and so forth. Ailerons don't line up. The end caps of the wings are all out of place and twisted, and I mean, it, <laughs> it speaks for itself. It's pretty horrendous. Every part was just twisted off the sprue. Sometimes there's bits of sprue left on the plane here. Um, so that's what we mean. Building bad is just making it as awful as you can. Um, breaking every rule of, you know, modeling, like ruining all your skills. Look at the, the giant gap there, and then the cockpit doesn't line up. <laughs> the stabilizer's just, like, barely resting on there. So it's it's pretty abysmal. Um, surprisingly sturdy. It's not, it doesn't wobble or rattle or anything. But anyway, it's time to paint it. And I was going to do a Mr. Bean and get some firecrackers and put them into little pots of paint, light all firecrackers off, everything be great. But in the great state of Rhode Island, you cannot get firecrackers legally. Um, and I'd like to keep it legal if I can. So we're gonna do the next best thing. I've got some balloons and I've got some really ancient testers paint from when I was probably 12 or 13 years old. Amazingly still liquid. We've got a bunch of different colors of it. So we're gonna take paint I'm going to put it inside the balloons, and then I'm going to hook the balloons up to my air compressor in a contained space. I'll probably put an upside-down Tupperware over the top of it, and um, we'll just blow up the balloons until they explode, and the paint just spatters all over the model. And uh, we'll see how it looks when it's all done. I'll try to get it so I can film while the balloons explode, but it's uh, no guarantees on it coming out. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. All right, we're outside. Got my compressor running inside the shop there. We've got a model outside. We'll get some paint thinner. A nice big tub to do the painting in. Some cloths so I can try to wipe the tub clean. And I'll be setting up a camera off to the side here in the hopes of keeping it clean. And uh, gloves, of course, because uh, it's going to be a messy project. <laughs> and paint clothes. So. Uh, get this set up and we'll see how it goes. All right, I don't know how well you can see in there, but we have the airplane over there on the left. And over here on the right, I have a balloon 
an orange balloon with orange paint in it connected to my airline. So I'm gonna go blow that balloon up and make it explode in there and uh, hopefully not wear too much and we'll see how this goes. the damage all right as we can see paint did come out but none made it to the plane we did have a little bit hit the tub here so that obviously just means more paint so that's what we'll do for the next try all right here we are for round two with the orange paint i have moved the airplane closer to the balloon and i have added the entire contents of the bottle of paint to the balloon plus a little bit of paint thinner because it was kind of thick and didn't splatter as much as i hoped so uh let's see how it goes this time All right, here's our results of round two, and there is more spread of the paint, and some did make it onto the airplane this time. So we will move closer, we will add more, and we will do a little bit more thinner, and I think we'll start to be in business here. All right, this time we are set up with green paint. I've moved the airplane much closer, and if it breaks from the balloon hitting it, so be it. Um, we'll see how this one goes. I've added a full bottle of paint and a full bottle of thinner refilled after that bottle was empty. Here we go. Let's see the damage. All right, as we can see, our propeller has been blown off. That is okay, we can reapply that afterwards. We did knock a strut loose, what a shame but we do have some green paint on our plane here. Control surfaces are all intact, all's well. All right, we're gonna turn it, and that seemed to work pretty well there. Yep, there we go. And now we'll do another color. All right, it might be getting hard to see in there, but I will uh, I'll give the tub a cleaning the next time I do this. But right now I have a yellow balloon right there, and I've moved the airplane there, and it has been repositioned to get other sides coated so let's see how we do. That one let go very quickly. Let's see how it goes. All right, there we are lined up again with our red this time. I've cleaned the window. We have the plane repositioned to try to get another side covered. Away we go. lit off pretty nicely. Amazingly, all that red paint all over the sides of the tub, only that much on the plane right there. How about that? Well, that's all right. This is an experiment. We learn as we go. Next, we'll do some blue. All right, here we are with our final color of blue, and we'll see how it goes. That let go much quicker than I expected. Let's see our final result here. Okay. Not as coating as I expected, but the paint is probably somewhere around 20 years old. So there we are. I think what I'll do is we'll put the propeller back on. That wasn't a breakage, it was just a falling off. So we'll reattach that when I put to go to do the decals. There we are. All right, our explosive painting project has finally dried enough that I could bring it back inside and give you a look over how it came out. So as you can see, green had a pretty big impact on it. There was a lot of green, a little bit of yellow. It's hard to touch it because it still has a lot of wet spots. Um, a little bit of yellow, not a whole lot of red, a little bit of red and a little bit of blue but not much in the way of damage. I mean, this strut here is dangling and loose. There we go, that one is pretty wobbly, but still on there, so we'll go with that. 
The prop did get knocked off, but that's not a big deal. I can always just glue that, glue that back on. Here's how the prop came out. It's hard to focus on that. So, anyway, I'll let things really dry. I mean, this is unmixed enamel paint, so <laughs> it's going to be very slow to dry. Um, some parts that have dried really quick, and some other parts are still, you know, just as wet as if I poured it a second ago. So, anyway, it's going to dry for a few days, and then I will put some of the decals on. Now, this kit is actually a really nice kit. I feel a little bit bad tearing it apart. I'll just do another one someday nicely because it, it does build up nicely. And if I had been taking my time, I think I would have really had a good time with it. Um, the only bad thing with this kit is the lozenge. If you look at it, it's really kind of poorly printed. So anyway, I might throw a couple chunks of that on there just for kicks. Um, but, you know, it's supposed to look terrible. So... <laughs> This has been a lot of fun. Um, it's a very silly project, and um, I hope you can enjoy doing something silly like this as much as I have. Um, it is nice to build them well, and I can build them well. It may not seem that way, <laughs> but um, doing this every now and then is a good way to blow off some steam and just have a little fun. Um, and it's not like I did something crazy like did it with a wing, wings, wings kit or something. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>